Going back to the raid, right? You hear 81,000 tapes. That's that's cap. That's cap? Cap. <laughs> there was no 81,000 tapes. Because I'm thinking, like, that's crazy. <laughs> that's, bro, there was no 81,000 tapes, unless I didn't see them. I mean, you know? y'all might have just been caught up. Like, <laughs> yeah. You said I, y'all was running I, it up. I, I mean, it, I didn't see. I, bro, no. We had plaques in our We had probably more plaques than we had CDs in that joint. <laughs> For real? Yes. We had plaques, bro. We was producing. Drum had, was helping artists. We had plaques everywhere, bro. We had posters and plaques everywhere. Yo, did they give y'all, y'all money back? No. Yo, what's poppin'? It's your boy, Mr. J. Hill, and welcome to another episode of the J. Hill Podcast. But right now, I want to give a special thank you and shout out to our sponsor, that's Top Dog Law. So look, man, if you're suffering from medical malpractice, a slip and fall, especially a car accident, make sure you call my guy Top Dog Law. That's Top Dog Law on Instagram and topdoglaw.com. Look, if you check out his Instagram, you'll see he uploading big checks. I mean, like every day. I ain't talking about the little ones. The big ones. So shout out to my guy, Top Dog Law, topdoglaw.com. Get that money. I know I'm trying to get it. We're going to figure it out. So the correlation was he got the worst end of the stick. I was yeah. ta- I was thinking about T-Pain because Jay-Z come out with that for Autotone. He get the worst end of the stick. Now he using Autotone. Uh, Quentin Miller was just writing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He was just writing. Who, uh, These niggas beefing now. They friends. Like, and he, he still ain't making nobody. He making music for nobody. Like, what the fuck? Like, yeah, well, T-Pain is still, he was still booming. Even when that came out, Pain was rocking shit. When that came out, bro, it went from momentum to like. You know what though? I think Jay Z, when he did Death of Auto Tune, I think he was like, "Yo, only T Pain." That's what I think he <laughs> was, was like. Crazy. He was like, "Only T Pain." All then, y'all niggas trying to be T Pain, cool out. Only him because he's successfully doing. But he was the super. He was like the cape of Auto Tune. So of course they only gonna look at T Pain. That's true. That's true. But I feel like that's where. Again, I feel like when I heard the record, it wasn't like aimed at T-Pain. However the fans took it, whatever, I took it as everybody trying to beat T-Pain now. All the wannabes. Back up. Because it's actually called auto-tune. Yeah. It's not called T-Pain. You know what I'm saying? But that's what we know it as. Us yeah. young guys. Like, that's what we knew it as. I, I feel that, that, put, Even Jay-Z he, said, put he, that T-Pain on. Yeah, he conquered, he conquered the shit. You know what I'm saying? Speaking of that, right? Like kind of being in the face of something and like falling off. How many times did you had to take bite the bullet for like drama being the face of Generation Now? Cause like uh, never, cause I'm he, he's he was naturally the face on how we built companies, even with the affiliates. It was always the face. He was out there moving and doing and grooving and doing things first. I was always behind the scenes doing so work, just making sure everything was good. Mm. But I always had a face. It was just that uh, people chose to see what they wanted to see. Mm. But again. I play my position. There's a Shaq and there's a Kobe. There's a Mike and there's a Scotty. But I feel like Magic the shit Kareem. you would do, or if you would get into some squabble, it wouldn't be as like magnified than him, right? Like even yeah. with the Quentin Miller shit, I'm thinking like yeah. that shit happened, and now every is on y'all, right? It's, it's yeah. not just drama. It's on generation now, niggas. You know what I'm saying? Right. That's what I'm wondering. Like, how was that? It had to be hard to figure. Oh uh, well, in those I, situations, I mean. I just sit back and just watch it for what it is. Like mm-hmm. I just sit back and just take whatever comes. Um, again, I'm just I'm just worried about work so much and making history that I have time to stop and deal with any, with any nonsense. And mm-hmm. that go for anything across the across the board. If somebody got a problem with me, we are gonna figure it out. It ain't gonna be a whole bunch of arguing back and forth and doing that. I'm trying to make some money because we on borrowed time. So that's just where I be at. You know what I mean? I ain't trying to hear nothing that ain't got to do with history or no money. If we can't make history, we making money, fine. If we can't make money but we making history, fine. That's what I'm on. Like I, All the stuff in between, it, when you younger, you be like this. Yeah, facts. Past three, four years of my life, I've been on like, man, I'm watching, I'm watching people die. I'm watching people suffer. Like, I ain't trying, I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to move forward and bring to the culture, bro. That's all we got. That, well, it's all I have. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's all what some people have. Like, people be talking about, yo, I, I don't got to do this rap shit. I'll do this. Like, let's stop that. Let's let's continue to do something that made us money, made our families happy, 
we add it to the culture. Like, like Drum always said, his his dream was to be, put his have his face on a flyer. My dream was to give back to the culture, like, mm. and be one of the best producers, which is common truth anyway. You know what I mean? But that that was my thing. But if I can't be that, I need to, need to add. Like everybody around me, if they if if it's there for them, they eat from me because I I give people samples, I bring in people situations, I put people on to business, um, I help in the most ways I can help, bro. Mm. Period. Period. That's, that's just that's just what I'm on. Yo, what, what what age did you find out? Um, or did you? I mean, you was a DJ, so you might have always known. So this, this question might be rhetorical or bad. Did you know that like bootlegging CDs was wrong from the jump? No. At what did you find out when? How, well, how, when bo- did you bo- find like, out? bootlegging CDs, yes, but making mixtapes, no, because we were actually working with artists. Right. You know, I found out when <laughs> we got arrested. Facts. You know what I mean? And that's when I was like, oh shit, we was really, we was helping the culture. Like, you know what I mean? We never really, you know, really thought it was. Like, you always went places and seen people bootleg movies, but we weren't doing that. Right. We were actually, if Beyonce was on the cover, she more than likely did the intro. Right. You know what I'm saying? John Legend did the intro. Uh, Niles Barkley was the biggest thing when they came out with Crazy and stuff. We did a mixtape with them. They was all over the tape talking. You know what I'm saying? So we were actually working with the artists, so it didn't give me a chance to really think that... Um, any of that was wrong until I saw it. Like it could, it might have been wrong. You right. know what I'm saying? But that's kind of um, what saved y'all, though, right? Because like yeah. the only thing that was the problem was like the not having an address or some shit like yeah, that, right? Yeah, it was a, it was a couple logistics. I mean, it, and it's a sticky situation because the labels can't have that. You know what I mean? They can't have certain things going out. But it was a promotional tool. You know what I mean? And and not for nothing, it was. 75 percent about the artists and 25 percent us like us we were we were the billboards for the artists to pop like all the people that popped off against the girls or tape we did they got all the merit Mm. you know we got we got our merit for being the being the um the vessel for them to move through but they popped off Mm. you know what i'm saying we were still in this space i was still in the club djing still having to make my money and still seeing people and built great relationships with the rappers, but they seen the significant of it. You know, Yo, it's kind in of my like, opinion, some people might say, "No, Gangsta Girls was the big brand." I was, I was looking at it like, man, that popped off for them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's it, how I saw it. It did, I think. Um, and the artists like Little Wayne, uh, shit, Ti, uh, like they definitely, I think they sh- showed it. If that made sense, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Like we, it. we saw, and then honestly. It popped, but it also solidified some of our favorites. So, for example, uh, I, I'll never forget when Boosie got one, mm-hmm. right? And, like, I was a Boosie fan. That shit so, was hard. You feel me? So, like. <laughs> yeah. Boosie and Webby, both they shits was yeah, hard. Yeah. So, yeah. like, when, when when we saw Boosie having a gangster grill, it was, like, solidifying Boosie hot. He he next. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it kind of, like, it's, but that goes into my next question because. Y'all made a like a cognitive decision to say, "Yo, we are gonna have something else." What what birthed the the um generation now, really, yep, right? Yep. Like, okay, for the people that don't fit in this gangster grill box, right? Like, uh, I think Kanye West, um, shit, Lil Uzi, like, yeah. let's create generation now. Yep. How important for for uh, an entrepreneur to have like I don't want to say backup, but have some like you might have your main thing, but have yeah. something else that works too. Uh, it's important. I you know I get into these spouts with people saying, "Don't put all your eggs in one basket." Um, but I still live off that term, but a little bit of have have something that comes off the brand like a uh, like you have the umbrella mm-hmm. and then you have everything under the umbrella. Like so you got gangster grills, which could work for Boosie or could work for Webby or it, it worked for a lot of people. It worked for Jim Jones. It worked for Fab. But there were some people that uh, we wanted to make a brand for the people that really wasn't listening. Mm. Like, you know what I'm saying? People wasn't really getting Joe Button's bars, mm. uh, Jay Mills bars. Uh, <laughs> you know nah, what I'm saying? Real. Like, I'm with like you. it was a lot yeah. of people like that, like stack bundles. Like, you know, these guys like really had something to say. And I feel like um, our approach was really giving them the freedom of speech. It's just, you know, it's like, um, I don't know if you ever seen that movie where uh, I think it was Sandra Bullock, and they couldn't see his stuff. You couldn't talk. Bird it was box. like you, yeah, something you was in a movie where you couldn't talk. Yeah. Like people Bird took, box. yeah, they took yeah. the, they took it away from them. So we wanted to give them like here, 
<laughs> mm. people, I don't know what's going on right here. Like I'm going down, I'm going down um, uh, Mississippi. I, I used to do Biloxi, and it's just an example, Biloxi, Hattiesburg, Jackson. And when I got to Jackson, I DJ, and all they wanted to hear was Boosie. You know what I mean? All they wanted to hear was Webby. Anytime Set It Off came on, the walls fell down. To this day, though. Right? So who would we be as captivators not coming to say, yo, why don't Baltimore, why don't D.C., why don't uh, Sarasota, and why don't Philly know about Boosie? This dude is killing shit down there, mm. right? Why Why is it, why am I going to that club to DJ? I, I watch, and, and this is a real story. I went to Hattiesburg, and I went to this big, it was like six, 7,000 square feet club, and when Set It Off and them joints came on, it was like, Bro, it was it was another feeling. So I was like, bro, how do we how do we make the rest of the world feel like that? You know what I mean? And that goes for everything. Like it's certain records that I heard. I was like, why when Headbuster came out with a little scrappy, I was like, why the world don't it's our it's it's our job the world to hear this. It's Not our fact. job for people to hear I fuck my money up. Yeah. <laughs> now I can't re up. Not like y'all if you was in Atlanta and didn't see how that worked or hard in the paint. Bro, that shit was different. You know what I'm saying? So but we it wanted resonated, to be the- though. I cause like I wasn't in Atlanta, so I can't like I don't understand that much nostalgic of it. But I'm even getting chills because even in Baltimore, it's a ten hour drive. You get mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So like those things resonated in Baltimore. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I think it was that, that's what I'm saying. I think it was set up by us being um uh, being a staple because it allowed a, a, other mixtape DJs to be like, okay. I ain't gangster girls, but I'm this. So they was pushing. Okay. Holiday was pushing. Uh, <laughs> Infamous had his brand. Uh, 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 Southern Smoke had their brand. Sheesh. Fucking Scream everybody. Had his brand. Scream was killing shit. Jeez. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it allowed, it allowed, and I'm not saying we all started at the same time. I'm just saying uh, it allowed that stuff to grow to Baltimore for mm. you to hear because we all was mixtape DJs putting in the passion to let these, these uh, building our brand, but also letting people hear these artists that was the most important thing mm. yeah go, going back to the raid right you hear eighty one thousand tapes that's that's cap that's cap cap <laughs> there was no eighty one thousand tapes because i'm thinking <laughs> like that's crazy <laughs> bro there was no 80, 81 thousand tapes unless i didn't see them i mean you know? i might have just been caught up like, <laughs> yeah you I, said y'all was running I, it up i, I mean it, i didn't see I, bro no we had plaques in our. We had probably more plaques than we had CDs in that joint. <laughs> real? Yes, we had plaques, bro. We was producing. Drum had, was helping artists. We we had plaques everywhere, bro. We had posters and plaques everywhere. Yo, did they give y'all y'all money back? No. <laughs> nah. But they could. But the the charges didn't stick, right? Like. Yeah, they didn't. They didn't give it back. But I mean, do you want to hear my truth? I was like, man, f- that money. It that when you facing that type of shit for no reason. Yeah. You know, if you know you did something wrong and it's like, bro, I'm going to fight this. I got to get busy, whatever I got to do with this. But we was like torn up because we, our basis was, man, we love music so much. This is what we doing. We was helping the music industry. So okay. when you think about that, it's like, man, f- the money, shit. We fighting for history, you know. Didn't y'all like go straight to the radio station when y'all got up? <laughs> yeah, Drum did. Uh, I, I, I actually was there and I'm not going to lie at I wasn't rocking with it because I didn't want to uh I wanted to I wanted to think about what had happened and why it happened before going to a radio and like putting my chest out. Um but yeah, it was it was in that space where you could be angry or you could be sad. Mm. I was kind of neutral. I wasn't sad and I wasn't angry. I was just kind of like, "Damn, where do we go from here? Like we did all this to build history from music. Like we didn't do this for no other reason. Nice. Like this wasn't like one of those things where we was gonna get a bunch of money and and buy a bunch of chains and all that. Of course we had some good things, but we was excited to hear that David Banner wanted to do a tape with us. And Slim Thug wanted to do a tape with us, and these guys. Or we continued the legacy with Fab and Jeezy and all this. Like we was excited. That was that felt good to get. When them dudes came to my apartment with a tape, like, yo, let's get started on the Gangsta Girls. And I was in there mixing. It was all about that. It wasn't about nothing else. Mm. We was really seeing eye to eye with history. Like, what, what is this, this going to mess the streets up? That's all we was thinking about. This going to flood the streets. This, people going to love this. 
We don't want to think about nothing else. Mm. You know what I mean? That's all we're thinking about. Yo, this episode is sponsored by The Morning Meetup. Man, shout out to my guy, David Shines, man. He's probably one of the few people I know who actually built multiple multi-million dollar businesses, right? He created The Morning Meetup to help other entrepreneurs do the same thing. Now, listen. As an entrepreneur myself, I know how hard it can get, especially when we start making money and we get to like this financial cap that we can't get past. And honestly, let's be real. They say it ain't what you know, it's who you know. We probably can't get past this cap because we either, one, outgrew the people around us, or two, we just being lazy and weighing in the rooms we need to be in. It's just plain and simple. But trust me, this is your time because the morning meetup is that room we got to be in. It's filled with, filled with entrepreneurs getting to it. They reading different books every month, right? They holding each other accountable. And it's just honestly just something dope to be a part of. So listen, if you're an entrepreneur and you're trying to get to this bag, you're trying to flourish more than you've been flourishing now, you got to go to the morningmeetup.com. That's www.themorningmeetup.com and join now. Let's get to it. I'll see you there. It's crazy because like we hear, the, we, we hear these sayings like, heavy to hear that wear the crown, to whom much is given, much is uh, required and things like that. Yes, sir. And it's like even asking you, did y'all know? Because I figured you didn't know it was illegal or whatever. I know I didn't. Y'all, it was like y'all had to be that sacrificial lamb, though, because mm -hmm. after that, it changed the entire culture. One thousand percent. Like it went, it went into streaming. It went it to the shift, internet. Like literally, yeah. like that was probably. Yeah. Going, don't kill me, Christians. <laughs> but it was like it really changed the time. Like yeah. or some before Christ, like AD type Yo, that's shit. Crazy. Like, <laughs> it, like no cap though. Yeah. Like it really like you you saw mixtapes. It went straight from mixtapes to like I don't know like like the source and shit like that like 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 that and mm -hmm. to see that right i didn't even i i didn't appreciate it or understand it until i started doing research for the interview mm -hmm. i'm like oh so knowing that how do you think about like eps and stuff like that now because like you we still get mixtapes it all came from that that was that was the setup and that's what i mean by I don't understand what I did to people's lives. Like, let's take it away from the fan side. Let's put it into the artist side. <laughs> no, facts. We turned it into streaming to where people were making more money than they ever did in their life. You know what I mean? So hopefully anybody that missed out on money got a chance to make some money later. Mm. It's based on the mixtape industry. I can't say it's based on us. People will probably put point towards us because that's what happened. Say, <laughs> but it's the it's the history of it. Like, I can't leave none of these guys out. I, I used to see these guys put in some crazy work you mm. know what i mean crazy work like you mentioned scream like that dude put in a lot of work his whole squad they put in a lot of work bro and i used to watch them like bro them dudes is nice bro they dangerous you know what i'm saying and i feel like we all kind of shifted everybody was like oh man they got caught up nah we're gonna go shift and then it, it shifted into where it is now where you know we still people are like yeah he about to drop a tape it'd be an album really because it's going right. for sale but now it's a tape it's the same and thing. And that's what I want to talk to you about because I'm not as familiar. I know more than after. He probably could help me with this. So when, because it's a gift of curse and everything, right? Mm -hmm. Nowadays, right, like an EP or something that's it, like you can or you can't count it as like something towards an album, towards your uh, your deal. You can. You can. It depends on how you set up, but yeah, go ahead. Right. So do you think that helped or hurt the artist? The EP part of it? Yeah. I feel like it helps. I feel like it's, it's still part of the setup because- the, when when labels and people came to us to do the mixtape, it was the setup for the album. Right. You know what but I mean? But we, as fast, I'm not, do, do you, are, are, are the people with your, uh, I don't know, studies and stuff, are the people looking at EPs as a setup for the album? Like, like you said, when I, when I hear something that come out, I'm looking at it as a project, whatever it is. Yeah, I don't think certain fans know, but that's what we're doing. We're setting up where we put out an EP. It's just like, a, uh, it's just testing the market and seeing where we're at. So we know we, we we know we going after. We mm -hmm. know how people really love uh, this angle that we taking with the artists. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So that's where, like, the fans, I don't think, they just like, oh, I just got a new EP. Oh, I got a new album. Oh, I got this. Like, they don't know the difference. But you know then they mean? get caught up in, like, the numbers because people are still, and I think you just talked about this in your um yeah. your interview, like, people looking at the numbers far mm -hmm. as when it dropped, what, what sales go to what. And I feel like all of that can hurt. It can be a detriment to the artist's success of whatever they're trying to follow up with. If yeah, I, I just want the artist to stop um, worrying about the numbers because this is where uh, this can add unused gas and fuel to a car that don't need it. Like, mm. I was looking at... Yeah, break I mean, this down. I can, only, I can only go off one example. 
that I that recently messed me up and um and the example was Corey LeRae, right? She, and she put out a project and um I think the internet bashed her for not doing the numbers or whatever they, they thought it was supposed to be. Mm-hmm. And the one thing I wanted her to be, I, I wanted her to be quiet because I was like, bro, you talented. Don't f- fuck them. Mm. Just keep going. Keep go-, you know. And it wasn't her fault, but this is the times we're in where we have to defend ourselves and stuff like that. But the example of that was like, I feel like I, I like the body of work. That's all people, that's all the fans care about. Mm. There, there's fans, they pay attention to numbers and all that because they're in it trying to figure out like who scored the most points in the game and stuff like that. But I'm not going to take that away from a talented person. Mm. You know what I mean? And um, and that really, it really messed me up because I was like, man, I really felt Shorty's like energy. Like she really want this shit, right? She come from a lineage of music. And I just, you know, there's tons of stories like that, but that's the only thing I can think of because that it was like one, she a woman in the game trying to do what she do, whether you like her music or not. The numbers shouldn't dictate her dream. You feel me? The facts. So. Same same thing happened to um Sweetie. Exactly. I think um exactly. It, it's crazy because all of these kids are young. Yeah. Right and like and let's just be real. As, as much as the internet can be a source, it can definitely be a detriment too, right? Because yeah. like if you don't if you aren't old enough to understand your feelings and how to challenge it or ch- challenge it channel it. It can definitely hurt. So like you get every every blog is posting your shit flopped or something like that. Yeah. Now it hurts your feelings. And now like, I don't even want to make music because everybody talk. I'm the I'm the the the, the class clown. I'm I'm the talk of the town. Yeah, everybody it fucks you up. But they need the right coach. Like everybody need a Phil Jackson. Be like, oh, oh, our shit ain't sell. Oh, watch this mm. and keep coming and keep coming and keep coming till you know what I mean. It's it, it's it's a hit. Mm. Every artist went through it. Yeah. You think everybody came out the box and so <laughs> went number one and so like you know all these enormous numbers like nah it was a work it was a work in progress like if Uzi we put out all these tapes before we got to the album to be number one mm-hmm. we built and built and built and built people gravitated his music he had a lot of fans but we built on that mm-hmm. we ain't drop his first joint it's like oh say <laughs> we did you know what I'm saying so I'm just in that space where I'm like bro you got to we got to keep working and working and working. With all these artists, this is again. I'm speaking on a culture. This is all we got. If we continue to bash everything that's coming down here, and I'm an, I'm not I'm not gonna go on record. I'm go off record and say everything's supposed to belong to the culture, but I'm just saying the people are in it. They're moving forward. Fans can say whatever they want. I just don't want the artists to get bent out of shape if they if they if they project don't do what they expect. You got to keep working. I think you that's know? it's. I think that's easier said than done, though, right? Because like. Being older, right, being in the game so long, it's easy to have, like, hindsight bias, right? Like, in hindsight, it's, it'll be it'll be good, but you've had that experience. But you young, it's kind of hard to hear that. Like, I get what you're saying, but it's kind of hard to hear that. I mean, I'll give you an example. When I was 22, I did a tape called The After Party when we was out there selling, when Dron was selling Gangsta Grills, and I had my tape on there. It didn't do too well at first. Mm. I could easily have been like, man, nobody messing with that. You know what I did? I did After Party too. Ash Drum, that was one of the biggest tapes for him. Like, bro, everybody want the after party too. And that's just me. I, I moved through that. That's like you starting a podcast or you've had your podcast for a second and one episode don't do the same numbers. Do you be like, man, that podcast, y'all tripping up. You're going to be like, hey, I'm going to hit y'all with the next one. No, no we got a part two. So I just want people to be in that state. And I'm not blaming anybody. I'm not putting nobody at fault. I'm just saying I want people to start thinking like, oh, oh, you ain't like that? Oh, right, watch this. Not you fact. like that? I send out beats. People don't like all the beats. Do they be like, man, get on the internet. Yo, people don't like my beats. And I just be like, oh, I'm, I got another pack coming. I, that may be the competitiveness in me. I might be like, yo, oh, I got you ain't like that pack? Oh, watch this. And I'm going to keep doing it until you be like, oh, yeah, you you did it that time. Now, you're talking some real shit. I feel yeah. like um, like even just being honest, just understanding that like, um, and this is really for the, the young ones coming up, you know what I'm saying, or anybody that's going through it. Understand there's a season for everything. Right, like shit. Even think about in the simplest form, bro. Like it's it it poured down raining today. It was talking about tornado watch and all that type of shit. By seven thirty, it was hot again. The <laughs> sun was coming up. You get what I'm saying? So it's like I know it you. might sound cliche, but this shit is real. Like even like like you, I got a story myself. Like man, it was a season where my shit is doing all hundred millions views, literally. And it's a season where my shit might not do that, but you 
I think it takes a special type of person to understand that. that. You get what I'm saying? The, yeah, to, to be stern in their position, be like, you know what? Yo, I was good. I must still be good. Right. Only thing you got to do is be consistent. Though. That's right. That's right. Like, That's right. even when I'm not motivated, I consistently work my way through it. Like, fuck, if I'm not motivated, what helps me is the consistency. Fuck it. Like, it's going to get back. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, no, that's... No lie, bro. No lie. No lie. I want to ask you one of the hard, weird questions. Going back to Uzi. Mm-hmm. You got you always uh, make it known about Diamond Cuts, how you found Uzi. Mm-hmm. Philly, Diamond Cuts DJ out of Philly. I was watching an interview on a breakfast club with her, and she was saying she ain't like how Uzi left her situation. Mm-hmm. She she said niggas take care of her and everything. So, but she was like, she ain't like how he's left her situation. It kind of like felt like she just, he just left her hanging. Mm-hmm. And um, I guess he ain't want to tell, he ain't want nobody to tell what he had going on. Mm-hmm. But then full circle, something similar kind of happened to y'all. Mm-hmm. He kind of left y'all and like it was this whole Rock Nation saving Uzi type vibe. Mm-hmm. Did you, I'm trying to word this right, you feel like you you saw that coming? Uh, I didn't feel like I saw it coming, but uh, so so clear it up, Uzi only went to management mm. with Rock Nation. Right. He's still signed to us as an artist. Um, the only reason I, I'm, I'm clearing up Diamond Cuts because as I speak, sometimes you forget who was involved in the nature of it, but not in my brain. I never mm. forgot no, you always, that I called her always gave her, and yeah. was setting, you know, and I had some fans be like, yo, why you ain't never, why you don't never talk about Diamond Cuts? So I started bringing it up because that was my girl. Okay. Like, she know that. Like, she know that uh, she was 14 or 15, I don't know what age, when I was DJing for Miss Jade and she came and she told me she was a DJ when she was in the, the academy, which we started. And, and um, she actually was moving with Uzi before I was even there, you know what I mean? And uh, you know, when we're when we get into that space, I just want to make sure I'm doing my due diligence by making sure that she's part of the history. Now, mm-hmm. as far as what she spoke about on the Breakfast Club, and it, and this is this is real deal. Anybody know about me? Like social media, those shows and stuff. I really don't pay attention because it's just it's just screaming. Uh, uh, Respond to what was said. You know what I'm saying? I just don't even. I mean, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I mean, I don't really like. Because, Not saying that's what she was doing. You know what? Because ninety percent of the time, if something's going on, when I see that person, I'm coming by myself, and we probably gonna be in the hallway, and we are gonna speak about it, and it's gonna be over. I'm not gonna swing no blows. We're not gonna. We gonna. We probably gonna argue to, to the end, but we are gonna figure it out. So when, um. I really, when I heard about the interview, like you're just now telling, I really still haven't watched it. Um, I don't know what happened with her and Uzi's relationship because I wasn't in Philly with them while I wasn't there. All I know was I really wanted to sign this kid. I thought he was talented. And, you know, he made a decision to roll with us because I think he thought that was his next level. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know what they were talking about if anybody promised each other anything, I just didn't, I didn't, I didn't buy into that because I'm so into like moving forward. But again, for the sake of it, I just wanted to make sure that I'm shouting her out and everything she was moving on because she was pivotal. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't, I was, I didn't find him at the skate park. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? It was a call and she told me and she made it happen. I only only bring it up for a transparent moment because again, just hearing her story, it sounds so similar to y'all story. And yeah, he's still signed to um. Yeah. And yeah, and I know for the people that don't know, y'all already worked. This shit is old. Like y'all already yeah. worked this shit back out. Like niggas is yeah. cool. Everything y'all took pictures and shit like that. Niggas is cool. Mm. But I, I was just thinking like, damn, like it seemed kind of similar in the behavior of the artist because, <laughs> like, it was a time where y'all like y'all could have drowned as generation now. Mm-hmm. Just being honest, like, I, like again, this is just a transparent conversation. Mm-hmm. Like that could have hurt y'all business wise. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? And I'm yeah. like, damn, like it could have been the same with her. And I'm just like, that's a that could be a transparent moment. Well, well, you know, this the one thing I I do say about artists: all artists change, mm. and all artists have to grow. Whatever, I have to respect whatever move you make. If I feel some type of way about it, I feel some type of way about it. But you have a vision for where you go. I'm not with you all the time. Mm. We set out to do and have some history. 
whatever you see you're going wrong, if it was wrong or right, and you're doing it, do it. It's the same approach I do with music. If you feel strongly about putting some songs out, but I'm the producer, I'm not going to be the egotistical person and be like, no, it's got to be my way. Do it, bro. If you fail and you want to come back, we'll work on it. If it works and you come back or don't come back, it is what it is. That's just my standpoint. Mm. You know what I mean? So I see that I can't say that everything is a pattern or the way people move, but I can say that artists change and they're supposed to. Mm. Nobody's supposed to stay the same. Even in my, like I've changed. I used to wear a lot of jewelry. I used to do a lot of wild shit, but I changed from that. It's mm -hmm. like whatever, you know what I mean? Do that, even when we started the interview, you talked about how like, like moving into like this new life, basically like reinventing yourself multiple times. Mm -hmm. You think what you just said, that's kind of ben the benefit of having so much um, history in the game. Having so much time in the game, just being able to understand things on the other side. Because at one point, I'm assuming you probably wouldn't be as grounded. It. Yeah. Well, things things do things happen to you where uh, it grounds you. Uh, I, I just spoke about this recently. Uh, the reason why I was thinking differently about an artist from Philadelphia was an artist that I was working with named Jimmy Wall Street, and Jimmy Wall Street was special to me. He wound up getting killed. Mm. That hurt. You know what I'm saying? Uh, when you lose money, it hurt. When you lose relationships, it hurt. So a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff hurts you to where you're like, yo, bro, how can I not feel that pain no more? Mm. Do I drink it to death? Do I snort it to death? Do I smoke it to death? Do I drink lean to death? How do I get myself numb to this pain? I chose to fight it like Mike Tyson in, in, in the ring. Mm. I just fought, you know what I mean? And I never used any of those things to kind of like medicate my thought process. So that allowed me to say, yo, move this way so you appreciate your history a little bit more. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? No, thanks. And uh and that's just where and that's just what that's just what I'm on. You know what I mean? I just can't really uh I can't really fathom anything else because I've seen so much. Like you come from Baltimore, like it's a shame that we had to see people die in front of our face before. Like I've seen people nah, get real, like killed. In real life. I've seen people die in car accidents like in front of my face. I've seen people in shootouts in front of my face. It don't and you get you can have PTSD about it and think about it. Like, you know what I mean? I've had dealings with cops that weren't always the best dealings because, you know, I might got stopped in traffic and I wanted to argue with them or whatever. Whatever the things were. All those things added up to a mound where I was like, you know what? <laughs> you know what I mean? Let's get mm. into the let's get into the history of it. Like mm. not even worrying about all that. Like Yo, being an OG in the game, you uh I think one time you referenced yourself as like being like a purist. Yeah, like like yeah. wanting like just wanting that old school hip hop shit, right? Yeah. But reinventing yourself, today's new ways music, are you rocking with like the new music? Especially Philly. Cause Philly Got some like they make a different sound that's way different than how it used to be. Are you rocking with the new age music? Yeah, I am. Uh, the thing is, I don't get a chance to listen to it all the time because uh, I don't like to listen to current music. It taints my brain to make music in this era. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I go back to references so I can get ideas to see a landscape of where I want to be at musically. Mm. So I, if I if I get stuck in a rap radar. Uh, uh, I'm not rap, uh, rap caviar playlist or like a, you know, a Spotify or Apple playlist and I'm listening to that, I feel myself go, getting that mode of the music mm. instead of saying, hey, I still got an identity. Brain, wash your brain a little bit and listen to this. But am I aware? Yeah. You got somebody in the room don't even know I was aware of what he was doing. I fuck with that. That, that caught me by surprise. So I like that, that. that. So that's what I'm saying is about like, I'm st I keep my eye open to everything's going on and I'm monitoring. People don't even know I'm monitoring stuff. Mm. And I set up like little, you know, my other man in the room and uh, he been coming sitting around me just, you know, arms folded, chilling. And just a couple of times where he was just grooving to the beat and I don't know if he knew uh, how to say he liked the beat. So guess what I did? I gave him the beat. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Figure out what he could do with it. Curious. Like you said, we ain't have those people like mentoring us coming up, right? Mm -hmm. Especially in our, I don't want to say mentor because we had mentors, but it wasn't in our career. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yep. 
how can somebody get around you? Like if somebody just want to, I don't know, be like you said, your man in the room just knocking his head. Like how does somebody get around you and help you out or, or become a mentee? Bro, it sometimes it just it happens, it happens organically. Like I'm going to speak on SETI, right? SETI Hendrix. And he always tell the story about how he snuck in our studio <laughs> and was playing an intern. Yeah, thanks. It happens. No, you know what I'm saying? I wouldn't force. I wouldn't want nobody to force themselves. I'm in a restaurant and I'm eating my family and walk up and try to be around me. But it may be that chance that you might not ever get. So plant your seed, but make sure you plant it correctly. Again, my homie's in the building, and uh, and again he was just playing a position. He came around for six months before he even got a beat. Mm. I didn't even know he was going to be in that space because I just fucked with him as as a person. So I wind up, you know, y'all from Baltimore, Spud, right? Uzi first show here, I saw Spud there. Asked Spud what I said to him. I liked his eye. I said, bro, you're our new photographer. Mm. Came to the studio. He's been there ever since. I don't even know if we, if that's why we stay connected, but that's what happened. Mm. It's 1,000% the truth. I'll tell you, nobody was talking to Spud like, come be our photographer. But I saw, I saw he was hungry. So I was like, yo. Come to the studio, bro. Now you do got that eye, like uh, it's shit. It's it's the writing is on the wall already. The Uzi situation. Mm -hmm. Some people gonna hate me for this, but even Jack Harlow, like Jack mm -hmm. Harlow, is talented. But you know, a lot of people saying he an industry plant. I don't know if you've been hearing that shit. I hear it. You hear yeah. it? Yeah, I hear it. Oh my, I say yeah. like people been saying that shit. Like, I hear it all. Did you? What, what's the industry plant? What, where do people get that from? The industry plant came from. Uh, I think it originally started with. Uh, uh, family members getting jobs in positions they ain't supposed to get it. So if somebody was the head of Atlantic Records and their niece is now the head of A&R and never had no experience in music, never made a record, never was around something, I think that's where it originally started. Okay. Um, and that's I'm not pinpointing any record label, I'm just saying that's where it came from. Um, in the beginning of music, we always looked at the labels as suits, like they was controlling and not letting us have our freedom as artists. Gatekeepers. Bam. Okay. So that's when it came. Uh, that's when it started. But then we started seeing rappers come into the game that really wasn't supposed to be in the game. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I so I was like, bro, who planted you here? Nah, facts. Who brought you in here? Because you don't act like us. You don't, like, who put you in here to be a robot? Like, that's where it came from. Okay. So, you know, um, they always going to identify something foreign with being a, a plant. You know what I'm saying? But you, I, I identify plants that people, and this is me. I want, I don't want, uh, I don't want somebody to come and do your show in another setting. Let that man live. Facts. I don't want a million Uzis. After Uzi pop, everybody in the world was like, "Yo, I got this artist. He just like Uzi." I don't want that. That's fact. Innovation. That's you know facts. what I mean? Yeah. I don't want two Jack Harlows. I don't want two Setties. I don't want two Jay Hills. You see what I'm saying? I want the one and only. That's it. We came in this game as individuals. When when we when I was watching rappers coming up and who I wanted to be like, Will Smith had on the Nike high tops. Heavy D wasn't dare wear the same John, so he wore the low tops. Mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Run DMC had all the Adidas, right? Biz Market was like, I'm going to wear Puma. Mm. Then, you know, Slick Rick was like, I got the patch in the chains. And then everybody was like, well, I'm going to wear the Batman medallions. We was right. all like that. We got 40 people wearing the Mary jeans. That's in the game. No, they're not going to wear it no more because niggas is trending. B uh, baby just dropped the video. He said no. Mac oh, word? I didn't even know. Now it's going to be corny. I'm just saying, when I go <laughs> when I go shopping to the bar department store, the first people walk up to me like, hey, we got the new Amiri section. It's like, if y'all know anything about me, I don't even get down on trends. Mm. You know what I mean? I'd be over here with my stuff. I'm, so I just gave that as an example no, because that's one of the hottest But it's going to change. Like you said, that was going to be a trend not to wear it. Like, it's, niggas are weird. Like, <laughs> right. People, like, you don't have no right. identity. Right. So that's all I'm saying. Like, industry plants came in. It's like, yo, be Uzi. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Be, be little baby. And it's like, bro, lead, they the one and only. Leave them alone. Not facts. Yo, you had one of the best examples ever of why niggas don't make it from like cities like ours, right? Mm -hmm. At first I was saying, because we don't have like one particular sound. Cause I, when I think of like Detroit, um, I don't know, all these other places, like they got a sim like a similar sound. Mm -hmm. and, but you was like, Atlanta is so lit. People always think like Atlanta come together, but you, I think you were saying like, Atlanta is a place that everybody come to. Yes. Right, like people come to Atlanta, so it kind of helps out the music 
industry kind it's of. A, it's a hub. Atlanta always been on some player shit to me. Like when I came to Atlanta, I really didn't understand. I was just on my Philly shit. I was just like, man, I'm Philly ball. You know what I'm saying? I'm These just all weird, there. man. I'm on, I'm on some <laughs> shit, dickhead. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, but I, uh, you know, once I got into the culture, I was like, oh, like Southern comfort. Like I never realized like how so many people just showed me love. It wasn't even because I was in music. It's just how Atlanta rocked in the early 2000s. It was just like, I, I took it like I was telling people they'd be riding down the street, hanging out the window, throwing bows. And I used to be like, yo, they setting it on me. Mm. You know what I mean? But a couple of people said, nah, nah, nah. They showing love. They just showing you, yeah, they got, you know, they riding all crazy in the street. I was on check. I was like, yo, you know what I'm saying? Um, so when I, when I say those examples, Atlanta is a place where people accepted everybody from everywhere, bro. Mm, mm, mm. Everywhere. So everybody came down here and it was like, we not trying to take over the city. We trying to add to the city. So a lot of people take in. So the more and more people come in the city, people just be linking up. I be seeing people in the studio with people. I be like, oh, how y'all know? Like, And they give it up, bro. They yeah, literally give yeah, it it's showing love, bro. It's a different it's love, bro. Crazy. That's what I'm saying. So it hurt me a little bit just to see the city get divided a little bit with violence and stuff because we built the city up to be a place where People could come, get money together, and do certain things. And that's all the dream was. Like, we never came to come take over Big Oomp Camp and stuff like that. We wanted to be a part of them. We wanted to be a, uh, you know, to the olive branch to guys, you know. And the way it's happening now in the rap game, it's like people just so insecure and, and just trying to box pe people out. And I'm like, man, Atlanta ain't about that. Atlanta's a great city. Atlanta's a player city. We get money down here. So I know you far, far removed, like, from street shit or whatever. But do you um do you still like hear talk? Cause you say you got your ears to the streets and shit like that. Being in Atlanta, like making your name in Atlanta, do you be hearing anything from back home? Cause I, I feel like when you make it somewhere, back home always got a tendency to try to pull you back or something like. This. It does, but I don't I don't hear too much. Number one is because everybody's older. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Okay. Everybody that came up. Everybody, everybody I used to hang with 47, 48, 49. They are probably already did their time. Everybody I know did 10, 12 already. Okay. And is out and like, bro, I'm changing. That makes sense. You know, I, I never knew Wallow back in the day, but I know Wallow did, he did some numbers. 20. He did some football numbers, Shit. right? But when he came out, he was like, bro, it was too devastating. I'm never going back there. And he turned his life into something amazing. Mm. You know what I mean? And I talk to him often, but those are the kind of people, it's like people that's older than me. Like, I've seen them go through it like, bro, I've seen them go through it a couple times and be like, you know, <laughs> I'm out this shit. I'm Not cool. Best. You know what I mean? And it's some some young people, you know, uh, that's still locked up that I know that's like nephews and and and, and cousins to me. But um But niggas, you don't ever hear like niggas saying like, I don't know, like, man, he ain't trying to sign niggas from the city. Type we, shit like we've that. heard we've heard it from we've heard it from multiple pockets. I've heard it from multiple pockets. Mm. But I did everything for my city. Like I've did tapes with people that I wasn't supposed to do tapes with. You know, just based on my brand was hot at that time. I did it. I seeked out. I moved to the city. I went. I moved around. I walked down South Street. I never ran from nothing in the city. I felt like anything that came to us like that was just out of pure, like, just misunderstanding. Like, misun yeah, exactly. I don't even want to say hate. Bro. Not. I, I don't say hate because it don't. A lot of don't. It don't be hating. But people be like, man, he, I feel like I'm talented. He ain't fucking with me. But I'm fucking with everybody that's talented. I might tell you to your face. Keep working, bro. For me right now, that's not what I'm looking for. Mm. I saw Uzi. It's a kid from Jersey, Big O. I did multiple tapes for him. I did tapes for uh, The Gun Line, which was a great brand out there with Ace McCloud. They had, he had everybody out there. Like I always stayed messing around with the city. I never really got, and got involved in all that. And it ain't just based off street shit. It's just nonsense to me. I ain't I ain't with none of the nonsense. I'm oh, with facts. I'm with progression. So whoever is in that city, like rocking, like we go to Baltimore, I find out who is it, and somebody be like, man, don't mess with him. He was over there doing this. Like, man, let me do my own research for that. Not you know facts. what I mean? I think he's talented. So that's just what I'm on. Not you know what I mean? I think I asked that because like just being here now, I ain't here as long as you is. But yeah. I feel like we always had that trap of like getting pulled back by our city. Facts. And like I try to do everything for my city, but it still facts. be a little bit of people who just don't see it, and that should be frustrating. Like y'all, I'm y'all niggas is dumb. Yeah, you got to go over the top and do it. Like you know mm -hmm. what I mean? You got to do stuff with Shoe City. You know what I'm saying? That's facts. giving back to your city. That's where everybody go damn near to get their shit, nah, or facts. just do stuff like that. And that's where I be on. I be on top of the city. Like, what can I do to help? Like. I got uh, my brother Dao Bay. He's out there, and he campaigned for nonviolence. Like he mm -hmm. he campaigned. He did 
uh, 12 years in, in, in the joint. And when he came out, he just made it known that he wanted to be a part of the city. I tease him all the time because I'm like, bro, come move down to Atlanta. Let's set up some businesses and do some stuff. And he'd be like, bro, I owe it to the city. All the time he said he owed it to the city for what he took out of it. So he he marched. He, he, he helped city councilmen. Uh, sign petitions so they can get in office. He do a lot of stuff in the city. He he builds um, real estate and affordable homes for different people. And I feel like that's like that's like the best thing you can do. Nah, you fact. Know and then y'all got talent. I think one of my uh, my man Seven, one of his favorite artists is down. They put me on with the dude uh, Leaf Ward. Ain't that he from Philly? Leaf yeah. Ward. I ain't yeah. know about him. Yeah, yeah. he <laughs> that nigga. I, that nigga lit. But when he showed it to me, I, he had, mm-hmm. he did a feature with my man uh, YG Tech. Yeah. So like. I was no, nah, y'all got some talent there, man. Yeah, it's all, Philly is is a great city, bro. Like the food, I argue with people all the time. They keep telling me, you know, I get upset when people be like, "Yo, I need a Philly." I need what they be calling it, a chicken Philly. I be like, bro, it's called cheesesteak. Yeah, cheese I be steak. mad, like you know what I'm saying. I ain't gonna lie to you though. You probably hit me with this, but I ain't gonna lie. Baltimore, we got some fire cheesesteaks. I'm just saying. No, y'all do. I know. I know Philly's supposed to be the home of the cheesesteaks, but now y'all do. But Baltimore y'all, got some. Y'all cousins. Yeah, we got some y'all shit. Supposed, if y'all didn't, if y'all was that close and didn't, I'd be mad. And y'all don't put sh- <laughs> and, and y'all don't put shrimp on y'all shit. I went there. I want to get a shrimp cheese steak. They like, what the fuck is that? Yeah, fuck with us. Far as we going to Sim. Yeah, fuck with us in the city. We got the shrimp cheese steak <laughs> shit go crazy. I'm just saying, bro. Like, stop playing. Yeah, but nah, dog. I, yo, I appreciate you, bro. This is uh, this shit was amazing. Um, I wanted to ask you this. Everybody, every artist think that shit is the hottest shit in the world, <laughs> right? Yeah. Everybody think that shit is, everybody think they, if they ain't the new something, they different. They think so, right? Mm-hmm. How do you measure an artist's value? Like, how do you me- measure that, that their value to music, Damn. their value to the culture? Damn, that's a tough question. Uh, I've answered other questions that are, that are cousins to that question. And I want to say uh, their intentions and the conviction. Mm. Conviction. Uh, I, I can only that. I can only monitor by that. Like I I live and and die by that that um that word because if I can find out that you're convicted and you really mean what you' about to do, it's gonna work, bro. Mm. That's the mastery of it to me. You're gonna get it at some point because you really believe it. That's how I look. Some people come to me. I'm the hottest artist. I don't think they believe it. Mm. I'm the hottest podcast. I don't think you believe it. I'm the hottest brand out. You know what I mean? I'm going to stop saying podcasts. I'm going to say brands. Mm. You say, I'm the hottest brand out. I got to see if you believe it. Nah, facts. That's how That's how I'd be like, he going to be the next one. Mm. It's a kid, like right now, shout out to Mark B. He a new DJ. I mean, he DJ for 21 Savage. And uh, he came and played me his group. But I told him in the room, I said, bro, you remind me of me. You remind me of, like, what you believe in is how I used to believe in years, he's going to be that next guy. That's just how I feel. Mm. And this recently happened, and I was like, bro, you remind me of me, bro. I, just the way he was like, tunnel. he's like this. He don't see nothing but the success, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But the end goal. Like, <laughs> nothing but the success. He it. like straightforward. So, you know, it's guys like that. Even the rappers, like, it's some that I feel like convicted, but still fall back and let them develop it. So they could come back like, oh, gee, I told you I was going to do that. I'm happy with that. Mm. I want you I want you to do it with or without me just because that's what we're supposed to be doing, man. We built up a whole culture to accept and help our people get money or get history going. You know, some people going to rob the culture and do what they want, but it is what it is. But I feel like we built that up. We watched basketball dudes play at the park and go to the NBA and make $139 million. Nah, facts. Yo, I'm going to let you get out of here, but you know, I, I still got mad questions. Man, ask what you uh, bro, want, bro. I'm here. Um, yo, so I, uh, you talked about, you did the uh, Go Crazy with Jeezy, right? Yep. That's your first placement, Jay-Z on there. Mm-hmm. You go to the, uh, I don't know, but the concert, and you see Jay-Z come out to your shit. Have you heard that story? Yeah, come on, bro. Like, <sighs> I, bro. How, I, how I bring it up my head, the story? Come on, you feel me? I ain't going to lie. You know, I always say this. I, I, I shed a couple of thug tears, man. Cause I was up on the stage, I had no idea. Uh, Jeezy got this way of like when we communicate, we be like, "Yo, I got something special for you," and I'd be like, "What?" He'd be like, "I don't even worry about it," and I'd be like, "Oh, here he go with this again, right?" That's how the record started. Mm. When when he, he he told me he had something special, I didn't know what it was, and then Coach K wound up telling me it was Jay Z. I was like, 
bro, y'all got to stop. Mm. You know what I mean? So when it happened, it happened. But when we got to the concert, it was the same thing. He was like, <laughs> watch this. So me and John was on the stage. And when he came on stage and that, dun, 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 I said, boy, listen. But I think I was sweating. I think uh, I think the tears came down. I think I had the loaf of bread. You know how to get the loaf of bread when yeah. you're about to cry. You're like, yeah. why are you about to cry up on yeah, these yeah, niggas? Yeah. So I think the I think all that I think I was just like on some oh I couldn't control because I'm it's it was less a Jay Z performing it and more of the crowd like singing word for word and knowing things and I was like yo I'm really made seventeen thousand people sing along with this dude mm. you know what I mean and at that point a lot of the energy was coming from I still didn't think I was good enough like I knew I was gonna make it but at that point solidify because if you had jail on your record, it was like, oh, you made it. Right. You know what I mean? So uh, I was already happy that it was it was Jeezy on a record, but that one kind of solidified in my brain. It was like, oh, I'm really supposed to be here. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So I seen this video, right? And this made me think of you, producers, uh, DJs, or anything. I wanted to get your perspective on this, right? Um, he's not a, uh, a producer or anything like that, but it just made me think of it. So... Uh, is this? I don't know if you've seen this. Somebody helped this. Has somebody helped you? Give them some fucking props. Do you understand that people like myself only eat when artists say thank you for Ray for doing one, two, three? I'm so tired of artists being pieces of shit to the people that helped them. <laughs> like, dog, it doesn't cost you anything to say thank you to such and such for connecting me to such and such. It wasn't all you. Someone helped. And all you gotta do is say that person's name. That shit will change that person's life. So what you think I'm going to do next time you need my help? It's not about paying me. It's about paying me my respect by acknowledging me. Mm. I, just, bro, that's that's Ray Daniels. That's one of my that's one of my guys, bro. He's he's been around as an A&R, exec, manager, all types. And he one of them guys to give up props. I remember when uh he was first starting, he had Rock City. They wrote everybody records in the world, you know what I mean? And it was group. I did their first couple mixtapes. With no money, mm. no nothing, they always shouted me out. They all, it made me feel good that he was like, "Yo, thank you." Every time, so he not lying. Like it always feels some type of way when artists don't shout back and shout your name because it might not be as easy as giving me a million dollars. You going in your biggest? You might go on Good Morning America, be like, "Yeah, can it?" I, I remember this too. Um, I used to work. I used to work at Def Jam, and one of my my closest homeboys was a Sycamore. And Sycamore worked with Travis Scott. He worked with a lot of people. But at the time, he was working with me. We worked on Dirk together. We did some YG stuff together. And we did uh, we did a couple other artists stuff together when it, we were at Def Jam. And I, I can't remember the award show, but whatever award YG won, you know what I mean? YG went on the stage and he said Sycamore name. It shut everything down for me because I was like, damn, he really gave my man props. They was mm. walking hand in hand, and it just felt good that he said his name, you know what I mean? So I was like, wow, like that was, that meant everything. Mm. Because, you know, Sycamore might not be the one to say he did this or did that, or just, he might, he's a humble dude, he can just fall back. But when he said his name, like, I was like, I fuck with YG forever for that, bro. Mm. That meant something, bro. That nah, meant something to me. I brought it up because I figured like, you know, being a producer, making beats, A&R, like, a lot of times you might do something for the humble, but how do you get your love on the back end, right? Like if niggas ain't really saying shout shouting you out. For yeah, it. it's supposed to be. Um, it's supposed to be where y'all both can shout everything out. I don't want to keep going out and uh, saying praising uh, people's names to people I I have worked with. I want people to. I want it to be reciprocated. I want exactly. to be like. Reciprocate, I'm sorry. I want it to be like where we're both enjoying that piece of history. You know what I mean? Right. So like uh, there's some things where I talk about just off the record, like uh, Hit Boy, right? Hit Boy was one of them guys that I met when uh, when my wife was doing, um, when she was doing her music thing. And she was like, I want you to meet this young kid, he's talented. You know what I'm saying? And it happened to be Your Hit Boy. It, it used to be Hit Boy. You feel <laughs> what I'm saying? So then Hit Boy 
we just we just kept close. He moved to Atlanta. I used to let them sleep on him. Him and Chasing Cash. He was another producer. I used to let them crash at the crib. We used to hang out together. We went to all the sneaker stores. I took them to their first strip clubs. We went to eat all the time. We was just hanging together, like you know what I'm saying. And he shoot props back. But those are the type of things. Even Metro, like Metro is like a cousin to me, like a little cousin. You know what I mean? Because I hundred dollars for every legend he named. No, I'm just, story I, I, I'm, I'm just being truthful, like. You know, when I met Metro, um, his mom, you know, rest in peace, his mom came with him and was like, yo, my son make music. I want him to be the best. He came to my crib and sat him. I had a townhouse. He sat on my couch. We vibed out. I gave him some drums. We talked. And I just kind of mentored him through a lot of stuff throughout. You know what I mean? And he became Metro Boomin. But I knew he was going to be that. Mm. And it could have been somewhere I was like, let me sign this kid. But I was like, you know what? I'm going to help you. Mm. Same thing with Mike Will. Like you talk to Mike Will. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just naming. No, no, keep going. I'm just, keep naming, going, keep I'm going, just going. naming stories because I know if yeah, they, if they hear the story, they gonna co-sign what I'm saying. Like it's Mike hard. Will, when I was working with the cool kids, he was giving me beats left and right, and everybody around me is like, "Yo, he it. You should sign him." And I told Mike Will, I, I think we even sat down, and I was like, "Bro, I, I'm not gonna sign you. I want to work. I'm gonna want to help you if I can. I want to help you get to a space. Mm. You know what I mean? And that's just what I do sometimes." it might not end up me having to sign everybody. You know, sometimes I might have to sign some people to really give some dedicated attention to it to help you get to where you're at. And again, people are going to be like, well, he ain't talking about the business side. It's going to be a fair business side. But when I when I dedicate that type of time, I should be able to eat with you. It and sometimes you don't. Though. There you go. Because and sometimes it don't happen. Bro, I'm not going to lie. Paint a picture. If a nigga get me an interview with, I don't know, somebody crazy, Oh, you probably won't. St- I'm, you're not gonna. I'm not gonna stop saying that name. Like it just is what it is. Because that's something bro, I appreciate. It's like one thousand percent. That's how it's supposed to be. One thousand percent. That's how it's supposed to be, bro. Like, I do. I do it every time. Anybody to put me on with anybody mentioning name. That's why. Again, back to what we were talking about with diamond cuts. She was there. Mm-hmm. I, well, I'm gonna leave her name out. If I forgot it, I made up for it in time because. Again, when we're moving around, we don't remember everything. But I'm gonna remember that. I do remember that. Now you gave me some shit today. I pre- yo, I ain't gonna <laughs> lie. You, you, you turned my shit up. Oh, that's, shit. It's just real. We having a convo. It's not even an interview. It's more like we sitting and having a convo. I wish we. I wish you drank, but it's all good. Yeah, man. You know, I gave it up. <laughs> shout out to your wife, right? Shout out. Shout out to her. Okay. I, I was, shout out to Kayla, and I'm gonna tell you why, bro. She changed my life, and I always speak of it in different natures. But if I wasn't around. Uh, I would still be eating lemon pepper wings. You know what I mean? We ain't going to judge eating lemon pepper wings. I'm just saying for me, I I would be eating lemon pepper wings. I'm going to tell you because I'm greedy. You know we're going to eat some crabs together, though. Fuck we're it. definitely going to eat crabs. I got now, it. We, we, crab legs, we in. But, you know, with, with her just, you know, teaching me some health rules and just being a backbone of being like, yo, babe, change your ear. Yo, do this. Mm. Yo. <laughs> you feel me? I was gonna say. I, you feel I, me? I was gonna say. Uh, as weird as it may be, because I don't even know her from a can of paint, but she kind of remind me of you. Everybody say that, right? So it's like everybody say that. Even with like the uh, mind you, I don't even. Know, it's my first time meeting you ever. Yeah. Right. But like, just even with everything you said and subliminals and all that, I'm like that. She like a dr- she like a canon to like, how you play the the to, to drama like that's yeah. how even with like the tomorrow app and shit like that you like that was her idea for real yeah it was it was her i wanted to get into that so you know it was her idea that we started something because again i always complained to her about being on a stage and you know at the end of our at the end of you know me speaking in front of people they everybody get to answer a question mm-hmm. right so they ask a the question yo <laughs> what's the best question that everybody asks you how i get how on, I get on? <laughs> so it's like my answer was so trash because I was like, man, just keep working. You're going to get there. And it's like I had a problem with that over so many years. It's like, bro, why you keep saying the same thing? But that's the only thing I knew how to be truthful about. Keep working and, and you're going to get there. But I wanted to come up with a concept that uh, that combated that piece of language I was giving out every time. Mm-hmm. And it just met with her idea of uh, people staying in the field and getting money. Mm-hmm. So we created t- Tomorrow App to make a creative marketplace for creatives and clients to find each other, mm. to make money without it having to be so social. You got to find somebody DM and wait for them to reply. We're looking at people's portfolios. 
We looking at the jobs. We listen to their music through their links. And, you know, and her story was she just had friends, you know, one friend was working in the movie industry and she had wardrobe gigs. But in between times, she had to door dash because she couldn't stay in her field. And so those two ideas collided and came together and was like, oh, let's create some type of vehicle for people to be able to stay in a field, mm. you know, and clients have a hard time finding great creatives. You know what I'm saying? So we made that for them. And to be sure that everybody gets paid, a lot of these creatives, I speak over and over, if I DM and I'm trying to get a cover done, I might ghost you once I get what I need. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So we, we, we make it something foolproof for where the money goes in that app. And when the job is done, that money go right in your account. You ain't got to chase nobody. You ain't got to worry about a 90, 30-day net and 60-day net and all that. So you, it's, tomorrow. you see what I'm saying? <laughs> and so, and so it's something very important, you know? And... And I believe in a campaign so much, like the hat really never leaves my head. You know, only time is when I'm working out, but I just start putting on with a workout because it's saving the sweat from coming to my eye. Right. You feel me? So, you know, that's what I'm all about. I mean, just another way of giving back to the community, bro. Y'all love what you got going on, man. I um, I mean, you got to put the podcast section on there, though. Yeah. You don't got the podcast. It's co- oh, can't wait. Come Tomorrow on, media is coming. Yeah, you ready? You got to stop. Am Are I you ready? ready? You making too much money. No, I'm, I'm gonna support you from a. a you making too I'll much help. money. Nah, I'm gonna just help from afar, bro. I, I, I know what it. I gotta do. I'm gonna get some hats. I'm gonna just spread around the room. We're gonna be the sponsor then. Can we do that? I mean, can we get money on that side? We can get money, but we gotta talk about. I, I learned the importance of no, bro. I'm not. I, I, you said we we ain't had nothing. It's easy, but hell yeah. yeah. I had to yeah. learn some things. Yeah, I mean, shit, <laughs> I you know. To learn some things. You know? A, a lot of people ain't going to sit across you and say, <laughs> a lot of people ain't going to do that. I'll be saying, yeah, I might nah. regret that. I know what it is, but I'm <laughs> shit. We got to shoot the shot. Now, yo, I, yo, honestly, though, I really appreciate this. Like, like I know it might be pro- professional and shit like that, but I honestly am a fan, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, I appreciate I, that. People don't understand how this ain't easy to ha- have these conversations, to ask these tough questions sometimes because, like, I'm still a fan at the end of the day. Like, I ain't drink champs yet. I'm coming for them niggas, but I ain't there yet. So it's, it's still be it's <laughs> still be should. unbelievable to me when I be talking to some of these people. You As feel you me? Like I, yeah. like you feel me? So like I'm a fan. I still man. I I might go to Nori's show and be like, Nori, he know I'm a fan. He know I listen to his first album. He know War Report, one of my favorite albums. Mm. I'll be like that. But I'm, I'm still a Gilly fan. I'm gonna be cool with Gilly, and he want me. You know, he want me to sign his daughter because his daughter fire. I'm still a fan of you. Nah, fine. Well, my man, but we can stand there and do that. Yeah. We can be fan. Why we can't be a fan of each other? Like, Katie, a fan of Kyrie. Facts. You see what I'm saying? LeBron, a fan of Kyrie. Kyrie, nah. a fan of Steph. Steph, a fan of LeBron. We it's can just, do that. It's just so surreal sometimes. That's and right. Like, this part is just about me being real. Like, sometimes it'd be like, we dream for this. That's right. Like, I'd, like nigga, I would be, it, it would be a spit in God face to not. Thank him every bro. Facts. Like, this is crazy. Facts. Like this is crazy. Facts, bro. bro. Nah, but I appreciate you. Um, no doubt. Don Cannon. For the people that don't know, I guess if you plug your app, plug your your, your Instagram, all that shit, man. Yeah. So tomorrow app, please go download it. Um, I encourage you to get a part of it if you're a creative, a client, or just want to see what's up, man. Just go check it out. It's in the App Store on Apple. Android is coming soon. Uh, you know. I keep all my joints simple. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok is all Don Cannon across the board. Two ends in the middle. Don't forget it. Yo, Nori, watch your motherfucking back. Gilly, watch y'all back. You know the vibes, man. We coming. J Hill, J Hill Podcast. Yeah, Hill. We out, man.